Welcome back to the best Android apps of the year, this time for January 2026. And since it's a brand new year, we're switching things up and showing off 20 apps instead of the usual 15. So if you end up downloading even one app from this entire video, all I ask is if you can just drop a quick thumbs up. Immediately, we're gonna start it off with the banger. Orion Store is hands down one of the newest and the best third party app store that you probably never heard of. And that's because it lets you download almost every modded app out there really easily. So for example, instead of the regular Instagram, it lets you grab a modded version called Instafell, which removes all the ads and unlocks a bunch of hidden developer features. And if TikTok is more of your thing, you'll also find a modded version called TikTok Revanced, which basically gets rid of all the ads, lets you remove unnecessary things that you wouldn't want while you scroll, like seeing any live streams, the TikTok shop, etc. And it also lets you download videos without having any watermarks. But it doesn't stop there because Orion Store also has mods for X, Facebook, Messenger, Telegram, Reddit, plus a ton of genuinely useful apps that aren't social apps at all. It's seriously worth checking out. Huge shout out to Rookie Z for recommending this to me on my How To Met Reddit page. If you've got an app recommendation too, drop it there. And if I use it in a future episode, I'll be sure to shout you out. All right, this next one I think a lot of you are gonna love. It's basically called Essentials and it's a free open source app that acts as an all-in-one toolkit packed with a bunch of tweaks and mods that genuinely make your phone better to use. Here's a cool example. Google Maps has this power saving mode for navigation where if you lock your screen, it shows a black and white preview with just the essentials like the next turn you need to make. Super handy for long drives to save battery too. Right now though, only a handful of people have it, just mostly Pixel 10 users. But with Essentials, you can enable it on pretty much any Android you own. It also has another really useful tweak where it lets you remap your hardware buttons. So for example, you can set it so when your screen is off and you long press the volume up button, your flashlight turns on too. Or if you're listening to music, you can skip tracks or rewind them just by long pressing the volume up or down key or do a bunch of other things. Essentials also lets you snooze those annoying persistent system notifications you normally can't get rid of. And here's one I love too. Uh, you know Nightlight, which warms your screen up at night? Sometimes you don't want it for certain apps though. Essentials lets you pick which apps automatically turn Nightlight off when you open them. And then after you exit the app, it'll turn it back on. So it's really clean. And honestly, that's just scratching the surface. There are so many more mods found within this app, like you can enable edge lighting for notifications, even on the always on display for some phones. You can hide system status bar icons you never use, add extra quick setting tiles that your system doesn't support, and a lot more. And hey, those are only two out of the 20 apps in this month's list for January 2026. Kind of wild to think that I've been doing this series for over a decade now, and honestly, there aren't many YouTubers left still doing it. So if you've been watching for a while and still love this series, just give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment to keep me motivated. Let's try to see if we can hit 10,000 likes. Your support seriously helps and it means the world and honestly keeps this series going. So thanks guys. Okay, so you know how some phones like from Oppo, OnePlus, or even Honor have this super handy sidebar feature where you can swipe it in and get access to a bunch of different tools and AI features? Well, I've always wanted something just like that on any phone, and that's when I came across Arc, which does exactly that. Arc gives you a floating sidebar that you can swipe in at any time in any app to access a bunch of really useful AI actions. So for example, if I get a message and I'm not quite sure how to respond, I can open Arc and tap Smart Reply, and it'll generate a response that actually fits the conversation, no matter what app I'm in. Or if I'm scrolling through social media and I see a post that I'm not sure if it's real or not, I can hit fact check within that sidebar and it'll instantly let me see if it's legit or not. That one especially comes in clutch on apps like X or Reddit. When I'm shopping online and I find something that I wanna buy, there's even an action called find cheaper alternative, which basically searches the web and looks for better priced options. And if I'm grocery shopping, I can take a picture of the product, open arc, tap healthier alternative, and it'll suggest better swaps for me that will improve my health. And that's just really scratching the surface. There are a ton more built-in actions and you can even create your own custom ones too. It's honestly a really powerful app. Huge thanks to Hawkeye Mihawk for recommending this to me on my Reddit page. All right, next up, this app is a godsend. It's called GitHub Store and it basically turns GitHub into a clean app store style experience. So instead of digging through random repositories to find new apps, 
GitHub store automatically filters everything and only shows you projects that actually have installable apps. Plus, it also filters them by trending, newly released and recently added. And it's not just for Android either. It also works on desktop, so you can find apps for Windows, Mac OS or Linux too. And installing the apps is way easier than just using the normal GitHub site. It feels just like the Play Store. You got a big install button for the latest release. Plus you can see stars, issues and forks all laid out cleanly. And yes, you can still install the latest release from any GitHub repository directly inside this app. It's something that I've always wanted for years because finding usable apps on GitHub has always been a pain. Huge thanks to Reddit Fireball for recommending this one to me. Next up is Fork of Shizuku, and if you already use Shizuku, you're gonna love this because it's just a way better version. If you don't know, Shizuku is a tool that lets certain apps access system level features without root, using ADB permissions instead. And this new fork takes it to the next level. For example, the biggest improvement is what happens after you restart your phone. Normally, you have to go through that whole annoying process of pairing Shizuku again using the wireless debugging code. However, with this fork, once your phone boots up and it connects to Wi-Fi, you just tap start under the wireless debugging card and it connects automatically. Even better, once Shizuku is running after a reboot, you can stop and restart it without even needing Wi-Fi later, which is perfect if you're out and about. Another advantage is that if Shizuku crashes, it'll automatically restart itself, and it even supports a lot more devices, like if you're using a MediaTek phone or one of the latest Android 16 beta updates, this fork actually fixes a bug that just straight up broke the original Shizuku app in a recent update, so it works for those devices again. And probably the coolest addition is automation support. It works with apps like Tasker or MacroDroid, so you can toggle Shizuku on demand without even needing to open the app. Yeah, this one's genuinely incredible, and this app alone deserves dropping a thumbs up. Next is Doodles, and it's a pretty fun app that you can use with your friend or partner. Instead of sending regular text, Doodles lets you draw little sketches or write handwritten notes that shows up directly on the other person's lock screen. It's perfect for long distance couples, but honestly, it works just as well for friends too. Now, the only downside is I do wish you could also type text instead of just drawing, and unfortunately, there's no iOS version yet. Hopefully that's something that the developer adds in a future update. Still though, it's a really fun way to stay connected. I usually don't feature widget apps, but Glance Weather Widget is one of those rare exceptions where the idea immediately clicked for me. Yes, it's a weather widget, but it shows you your entire day's forecast in a super clever way that I haven't really seen before. Your current conditions sit on the left, and then the rest of your day stretches out on the right in this color-coded timeline, and then you can even tap it to show the rest of the days too. The app on top of that shows you how to read it too, like how the bottom section shows temperature using colors and curves, and then the top shows sky conditions and sunrise and sunset times, and then dots that show the rain or snow, and arrows represent the wind. It can feel a little confusing at first, but once it clicks, checking the weather becomes almost as fast as you check the time. And on top of that, it even has a live wallpaper version, which Honestly, it doesn't look that good, but it's there. Huge thanks to Meliorize for recommending this to me on my Reddit page. Next is Flowstack. This one's for anyone who struggles with starting tasks, staying focused, or just losing track of time. Instead of a to-do list that you will ignore, Flowstack gives every task its own timer. You stack them back to back, so your day becomes a clear timeline. If you need more time for a specific task too, you can add five extra minutes on the fly, or you can switch into a flow mode where the timer counts up instead of down, giving you unlimited time to work. And honestly, this has made me way more productive because it actually pushes you to start and helps you not spend hours on one thing. No ads, no accounts, and no in-app purchases. It just works like that, pretty easy. Then there's Momentum. This app makes creating time lapses incredibly easy. You take one photo a day of something, it could be your plant, maybe a project, your growing baby, and the app automatically stitches it into a smooth video in the end. You don't need any editing skills, you just hit create montage and there it goes. You can even adjust the speed and the frames per second to make the video flow a lot faster. It works like a charm. It's also super private too since nothing gets uploaded to a cloud. It's perfect for documenting anything over time. This next app is called Calm Sounds for Sleep and Relaxed. 
If you ever just want a simple app to play rain or white noise without paying for a subscription or having annoying ads, this is it. Actually legit, the developer actually got tired of relaxing sound apps charging money, so he made his own completely free with no ads or in-app purchases. Just a solid library of sounds, including rain, thunder, ocean waves, forest sounds, white noise, and even soft instruments. And you can mix and match to the sounds, uh, just individual volumes and create your own perfect soundscape for sleep or when you wanna focus. It's not groundbreaking and on top of that, there are some bugs in there, but it's, it's wonderful if you just want to listen to sound whenever. Next up is Dragon Store, another really solid alternative app store. It pulls together apps from around the web that aren't available on the Play Store, so you don't have to go hunting for APKs on sketchy websites. Instead, it takes you directly to each app's official website to grab the latest version. That means you always know exactly where the file is coming from, and it doesn't connect to any outside servers too. It just uses a repo as a backend setup, kind of like the Orion store that I showed off earlier. Definitely a great find if you're looking for apps outside the Play Store. Here's a neat one, Traffic Light. It's a really clean app that helps you keep track of your network speed and data usage. The design is the real standout here. It's built with Google's new Matera U Expressive Design Language, and honestly, it's one of the best implementations I've seen so far. Using it is super straightforward too. The main screen shows your daily internet use, split between Wi-Fi and mobile data, and at the bottom, you get a weekly breakdown. There's also a history tab that goes day by day and even shows which apps use the most data. Sure, your phone probably has something like this built in, but Traffic Light just gives you a lot more detail in a much nicer layout. Clipboard Remote solves one of those little daily annoyances, copying things between your phone and your computer. And yeah, I know there are other apps that do this, but this one just keeps it simple, clean, and totally free. It lets you copy and paste text, links, and even images between your Android, iOS, Mac, and Windows devices all over your local Wi-Fi. Nothing goes to the cloud, no accounts needed either. You just copy on one device, and then you paste it on the other, and it's, and it's there. Plus, it also saves a history of your clipboard so you can recopy something or edit it. So if you're constantly emailing yourself links or screenshots just to move them between devices, this app will save you a ton of time and works really fast. If you're using a video player like MX Player, I would instead recommend you check out MPV Extended. It's got a much more modern material you design. It's completely ad free too, and it's open source. It's built on the super powerful MPV engine, so you get great playback and support for pretty much every format but with a way cleaner and easier to use interface. You've also got all the essentials like picture-in-picture, -picture, background playback, gesture controls, support for external subtitles and audio tracks, playlists, and even network streaming. Plus there's no ads, weird permissions, or any limits. It just lets you watch your offline media without any interruptions. You know, it feels like forever since a great new third-party launcher has showed up, but Phi Minimal Launcher is the newest one that I found and it's off to a great start. It keeps things simple. You get a clean home screen with a search bar, your favorite apps at the bottom, and a swipe up app drawer. But on the left is where things get really interesting because you've got a whole page of useful widgets, quick notes, app usage, to-do lists, habit trackers, event countdowns, and a music player, which I'll be honest, is a little buggy. Then to the rightmost screen, you have a widgets panel where you can add all your favorite custom widgets. Plus, in the settings, there's even a rap styled recap of your phone usage over the year. Plus, it doesn't stop there. It's also got a nice focus mode where, when enabled, it'll darken everything on the home screen and hide all the distracting apps, even the app drawer, except for your essentials. And it still lets you access the leftmost screen with all those useful widgets. I will say, it's not perfect. I mean, it only launched in November, so it still needs a little polish, but it has a ton of potential. Definitely keep an eye on this one if you're looking for a fresh take on your home screen. If you're tired of ads showing up everywhere, whether within websites or inside apps, DNSNet is one of the best, most modern ad blockers that I've found yet. This one is based on an OG ad blocker called DNS66, and it uses host files from popular sources like Adaway, Steve Black, and, and more to block ads, malware, and all sorts of sketchy stuff online. Plus it sets up a VPN connection to reroute DNS traffic and filter out all the junk, and it works really well. 
Plus, unlike some ad blockers, this one is completely free, open source, and doesn't require root access or any sort of payments. Next, I know most of us are using QuickShare by now to send stuff between Androids, Windows, or even iOS devices. And while it works, it's not exactly flawless. Sometimes it can't find the other device. Sometimes the file just won't send. That's why I switched over to this new open source app called Transfer. It works over your local Wi-Fi, just like QuickShare, but it also sets up a mini file server you can access from any browser. You just type in the IP address into your laptop's browser and boom, you get this clean drag and drop interface to send stuff to your phone. And it works vice versa too. You can also send files from your phone to your computer and even share clipboard text between devices. No cables, no cloud storages, no mobile data, just, just Wi-Fi and it works. You know, it still surprises me how most Android phones still don't have a proper built-in equalizer. Or if they do, it's pretty simple and bare bones. So that's why I started using Echo Equalizer to improve the audio on all my devices. You can crank up the bass, tweak the loudness, pick presets for your go-to music genre, whatever. And it works throughout the entire system for any app, including Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, you name it. You don't need root either or mods. And unlike any other equalizer app, this one has zero ads, zero paywalls, and no sketchy permissions. Just a simple way to improve your device's audio quality. If you ever need to blur something out in a video, whether it's a face or an object, PutMask is the best app to do this with. It requires zero editing skills and lets you even blur out objects that move around in your video with ease. You just import the video, and if it's something like a face or a license plate, the app can automatically detect and track it for you. If that doesn't work perfectly though, you can manually add a tracker and resize it over what you want to blur and let the app track that item. Then from there, you hit the eye icon to enable the blur, and then you can export it within the export tab. It's that easy. The only catch is that the free version exports at a lower resolution and leaves you with a small watermark in the corner, and then you will need to pay for the full version, which has a monthly subscription. So that does kind of suck, but it works really well. Now, if you have a hard time waking up in the morning, you need to check out Super Alarm. This app forces you to actually do something to turn off your alarm in the morning. It could be solving a math problem or playing a memory game. And if you get the full version, you can even set up even crazier stuff like step count goals, have you scan a specific item you chose the night before, like a chair or a computer, or even make it so you have to shake your phone a certain amount of times in order to disable the alarm. It's brutal, but it works. And if you're not into the challenges, you can just use a regular alarm, but where's the fun in that? Anyway, those are all 20 of the best apps. If you wanna keep it going, tap on this playlist right here to watch the previous top apps of the year, or this one for the best apps of the month. Thanks for sticking around to the end, and don't forget to drop a thumbs up so we can hit that 10,000 like goal for even more apps next month. Catch you guys in the next video. Kapow!